everybody, Joy here. Oh my gosh, do we need to talk. Oh, I am here to tell you, this is the craziest, nuttiest world. Oh, at least some of the people in it. Can you tell by the background that I'm in a different house? I'm back in uh, my Edmond, Oklahoma house. I came a little bit earlier than I planned on coming because I had a doctor appointment today. I wasn't supposed to have a doctor appointment today because the doctor told me he couldn't see me for at least three weeks, maybe five, and so I said, forget it, call me if there's a cancellation. So this eye doctor called me, and sure enough, they had a cancellation today at 2 o'clock, and I just called him yesterday. So I asked Jerry. He said, sure, go ahead. So I came. So now you may not remember that I talked to you all about having to have cataract surgery. Now I went to my eye doctor here and I said, do I have cataracts? And he said, yes, you do. And I said, why didn't you tell me? And he said, because we thought we could give you glasses forever. And so he gave me a prescription and I went to that crazy surgeon down there in Durant, Oklahoma. And he was horrible. He wouldn't let me talk. He wouldn't let me say anything to him, remember? And he just got up and opened the door and handed this paper to this lady and said, give her monovision. And they scheduled me for two surgeries, left eye, right eye. And after I left there, I thought, that doctor's a jerk. He's mean. I don't like him. And I told all you guys, and you all said, get another doctor. <laughs> so this is doctor number two. And his name is Dr. Wright. And he's only, oh my goodness, two or three miles from my house here. Very close. And I love very close when it comes to doctors especially when they dilate your eyes and they're this big and you go outside and the sun absolutely blinds you. <laughs> so that gave me some of those wrap around really strong sunglass things to put in my glasses so I was able to drive myself home. But anyway, the crazy nutty part is I told him I was there for him to recommend me to a surgeon to remove cataracts from my eyes. And I told him, this other doctor said I had these broken blood vessels in my eye and my eyes were about to fall out and fall apart. And I needed to have this cataract surgery right away. So this guy looks at my eyes. And, and first when I went in there, I told him that the other doctor never let me say anything. And I said, I hope you're going to let me talk because there's some stuff I need to tell you. And he was very, very nice. And he let me tell him all I wanted to. Well, you know, my 65-year-old memory bank. I kept forgetting to tell him stuff. And so the first thing I told him, he said, okay, we need to do this, 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 and this. So he sent me down the hall and they put me on all these machines. And then I came back in and he was looking at the pictures and up and I said, oh, there's something else I forgot to tell you. And he said, what's that? I said, about a year and a half ago, I was got up from my bed and I was walking in the bathroom and my eye went totally black and I couldn't see for about five minutes. He went, oh, really? So, Oh my gosh, ran me down the hall, did some more tests on that. So he was looking at those tests, and I said, Oh, did I tell you about the time ball? <laughs> so then I had to do a test for that. <laughs> so finally, he got all the results back. He went and told me to sit out in the waiting room so I could have to see some other patients. Then he called me back in. He said, Now, is there anything else you remember that you should tell me? <laughs> and I said, No, I think that's all. They took my blood pressure. And I guess it was okay. It was 140 over 69, I think. I think that's kind of high, really, for me. But um, the thing about it is, he took all of these pictures. I've paid extra for where they take the picture, the really close-up picture of your entire eyeball. And he showed them to me. Unlike that other doctor, he didn't tell me one of the results of the machines, and he did not show me one picture. This doctor said, come over here. And he showed me his computer screen, and he showed me both eyes. And remember that nasty doctor in Durant said, you have broken blood vessels, you're high strung. <clears throat> I told this guy, that's another thing, oh, I forgot to tell you about the broken blood vessels. <laughs> so um, that's why he had to dilate my eyes. And so he showed me, he said, your eyes are very healthy. He said, with contacts and glasses, you have 20-20 vision. He said, I don't know why on earth you think you need to have contacts out. I mean, cataracts. Con you know, I always say everything wrong, you guys. I told you the other day to put those muffins in the microwave, and you're not supposed to do that. You put them in the oven. So I'm not having, wasn't going to have contacts. I was going to have cataracts out. And he said, you don't need that. He said, you just got the beginning of them, very moderate. He said, it's probably going to be another five years before you even need to look into that. So, oh my gosh, what a burden. 
of my mind, I was so happy that I made another appointment and came to him. He said, your eyes are very healthy. He increased uh, the contact prescription um, 0.25 in my left eye so I can see the little tiny jewelry things and stuff better. But that's all he did. And he said, come back in a year. So, oh my gosh, I'm so, so relieved. I'm so glad that's over. I don't have to have laser holes in my eyes or cataract surgery or anything. And so then the next crazy thing is the mailman in this town. The mailman in this town refuses to deliver my mail. Last time I was here, I called up and I said, I had mail, it was supposed to be here today, why isn't it here? So he went and he looked and he said, oh, it's here, but there's a note in your box that says blocked. It just says blocked. I said, what's blocked? He said, well, I guess your mailbox, mailbox is blocked. I said, blocked by what? Blocked from what? Well, I don't know, it must be a mistake. <coughs> but they made me drive clear to the post office to get my mail. So when I was in there, he said, what the deal? Make this mailman deliver my mail. So I got back uh, this morning. I went out, no mail in the mailbox. I called Ron, who parks his truck here every day, and he checks our mailbox when we're out of town. He said, you haven't had any mail for three weeks. He said, I check your mailbox every day. There's nothing in it. So I came back. I called the post office. Put me on hold for 100 hours. Somebody finally came. He said, well, I'm not your carrier. I'm a different carrier, but I'll go look. So we went and looked, and he said, there was a note in my box that said uh, to hold all my mail because I had a P.O. box. What? I don't have a P.O. box. I said, how can I have a P.O. box? I'm in a house on a street. P.O. boxes are at the post office. I said, if I have a P.O. box, where is it and what number is it? Well, I don't know. I'm just another carrier and I just answered the phone. I'm trying to help you. So I said, <coughs> does my mailman have a boss? Is there somebody there I can talk to that is his boss or something? So they said yes. So that carried on. I said, thank you so much. I really appreciate you answering the phone. So I waited 15 minutes at least. Um, <clears throat> I went and made a bowl of cereal with my um, almond milk and ate the bowl of cereal. That's how long I was on hold. So the supervisor guy finally came to the phone. What's the problem, ma'am? Told him. He checked. And he said, well, you have a P.O. box. I said, I do not have a P.O. box. Well, did you just move there? No, I didn't just move here. I've lived here for eight years. Well, your carrier isn't here. So he, you have a new carrier that started three months ago. Oh, hello. If that doesn't tell you something. So this supervisor guy took my phone number. And he's supposedly going to talk to my mailman in the morning and say, deliver this lady's mail or you're fired or whatever. <laughs> I'm sure they won't say that, but they should. I don't think you can get fired when you work for the government, no matter how bad you do your job. <laughs> so anyway, I started the new jacket, and I'm losing my voice because I was at that doctor's office for over two hours, and he let me talk, and so now I'm hoarse. <laughs> let me go put that new jacket pattern on, and I'll be right back, okay? I'm back. Here it is without the band on it yet. This one, it has the front, I don't know if you call it the collar, the sash, the thing that goes up and down. <laughs> but anyway, this one you don't just fold the lapel back. Ah, maybe it's a lapel. This one you have to sew on, okay? So <clears throat> I'm going to show it to you be without it on and then I'm going to pin it on and show it to you. But I don't know if I like this or not. You see these long points? long point see that I think maybe if I shortened it a bit I might like it better I do not know the back is just straight but the back is I don't know it's just kind of you come up this point and then the back starts and then it takes off <laughs> I don't know you know, this might be one of those things that looks funny when I'm making it, but when I get it all done, I might love, love, love it. I brought my dongle. You all know about the dongle, don't you? It's the thing to keep you honest that comes with your Artista embroidery software. So I brought it, and I might embroider something on the front lapels. I don't know what. If you have any ideas, let me know. Because I can always go buy something if I don't have it already. All right. 
I'm gonna pin the front who's you watch it on and then I'll show it to you with that okay I'll be back I'm back again I have the lapel thing I guess we'll call it a lapel pinned on now and so you sew it on and then it folds back kind of like the last jacket did only I think this one folds back better but still it has these long funky points <laughs> I don't know if I like them or if I don't. I'm thinking I might cut them and make them not hang down so far. Am I even back far enough that you can see how far they hang down? Tell me what you think. Do you love it? Do you hate it? What do you think? If I can turn around. <laughs> Alright. This is the jacket. It's called Getting to the Point Jacket. See there? And I've been eating my snack, so if I have funny things on my teeth, please forgive. I wanted to tell you something. Two of you asked me a question yesterday, so I wanted to answer it. I spent four hours. I spent two hours at the doctor's office, so I need a snack. So, what have you said? Quit drinking that water and talk to us. One of you said, how do you get so many things sewn? She said she just, she worked and she didn't have that much time to sew. Well, that's the whole thing about it. I'm retired most of the time. I can work four hours away on our own business and my computer at the house and my husband's computer at the house, this house and the other house, both hook up to our store, to our server or main brain or whatever you call it. So the little bit of work I have to do every week, I can either do from home or I can go in there and do. But my goodness, four hours a week of that, that's all I've got to spend. So I have whole entire days that I can sew. Now of course I clean my house and I do the wash and I fold the clothes and I cook dinner and I do the dishes and I do all those things too. But I guess you could say my full-time job is making clothes. <laughs> so that's why I can do so much of it. See, I left the other house this morning at 9.30, and it's 15 after 5 right now. So I'm not going to sew any more today. I'm going to do my blog for you guys since I'm in super fast internet town. Yay! And then I'm going to um, figure out what to do after that. I don't even know yet. <clears throat> my eyes are dilated, so... I had to get inside out of the sun, but I seem to be, these lights are shining on me right now, and I seem to be able to see okay. Um, oh, I wanted to ask you guys' opinion. Let me see. Joy, get back to what you were going to say. Okay. Two questions were asked me. I just answered one. Yes, I have a whole bunch of time to sew. Number two question was, do you make everything you wear? No. 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 I made this. I made these pants. <laughs> Y'all would ask me about pants. These are my Sure Fit Designs pants. And I made them when I was a little bit heavier. That's kind of scary. They aren't that baggy today. And then this blouse I made, and I cut the fringe in the bottom of it. So, I made this one. But no, I have a lot of blouses. I found a store called Belk, B-E-L-K, and they evidently sold for grannies there. Because their clothes seemed to fit me really good, even without a bust dart, without the round back and the sway back and all that stuff. Usually, uh, I can lift my low shoulder, lower the seam and it on a sleeveless outfit, and sometimes take the sleeve out and lower the shoulder on the right side and put the sleeve back in if it's not a very complicated outfit. But that's all I ever have to do if I even do that. And so, you know, pants now, there's so many that are just... Um, very, very simply made. I don't know, I bought some skirts the other day. My goodness, they probably made them in five minutes in a factory. They just got the rubber band waist and they're just straight in a simple, cheap knit. And, uh, you know, they charge you 60 bucks for it and then say you can have it for half price and half price is 30 bucks and they probably paid two cents to make it, but <laughs> whatever. I do wear uh, some clothes that I bought and a lot of clothes that I've made. Of course, the clothes that I've made, the fit is right and I enjoy them the most, but no, that's not all I wear, okay? And I wanted to uh, ask your opinion on something else, but I think I'll save it for the next vlog, okay? 
So, signing out on whatever day it is. It's a Wednesday, April 21, 2016, I think. So, I'll let you go for now because i got to go make a shake. Bye!